Hi, my name is Mike LeDuc and I'm going to uh, provide a real quick video here of just some of the features and design attributes of the the, uh, the line shuttle um, that we talked about for CAP. So the main components here uh, is, is in the write-up. There's the what we call the traction wheel, which is this thing here, and the power reel uh, with the power line hooked to it. Um, and there's the front and rear uh, rigging pulleys in the frame, which is uh, this portion here. And the payload arm, which used to hook a payload on. And those are the main components, and I guess the alignment clip, which I'll get into as well in some of the description. Start with disassembly of this device, and then you can kind of see how it's put together, the key features of it. Um, Really, the main thing, I guess, is is the uh, the traction wheel and the power reel. Uh, kind of gets to be a tongue -tied twister there, but those are attached to the frame via a um, small bolt and a wing nut. And those come off like so, and then there's some main components of this that, that we'll talk about here of how this thing's uh, designed. There we go. This is going to be a bit of a rough video, but at least to give you a basic idea of, of uh, the whole thing. So let's talk about the frame real quickly. Um, the main components of the frame, I guess, are the... the um, it's a carbon fiber um, material that you can get. Uh, just a single bar and then uh, basically it's set up so that um, the front and rear uh, rigging pulleys are about eight inches apart and then I put the uh, the, uh, the uh, traction wheel right in the middle at about four inches. That seems to work pretty well. You can experiment around with that and then uh, you'll notice that the, the traction wheel has to be offset a little bit off the center line so that um, basically the line that goes through the rigging pulleys has to be just tangent, tangential or tangent to the uh, traction wheel. So you want it to come in, line up, just right to come around and then go through. Okay, So that's one of the things you have to be to watch for. And then um, the back end of the of the frame has the payload arm, and this could be implemented in a lot of different ways. Um, it could be rigged, I think, from the center line or center of gravity of the frame. That would work. Uh, I put it toward the back. That seems to work pretty well. And then that also acts as kind of a pendulum because when the thing is up in the air, you like to have this pendulum weight hanging down to keep it from spinning and, and toppling around the, the kite line. That's one of the things to keep the, the lines from tangling. Um, and then you could also, at the end of this, rig a, a picovet um, line, um, which we can we can explore a little bit later. There's ways, I think, to do that. Instead of just having a pendulum weight, you can do it with a, a picovet as well. Um, and then the back, coming off the back end of this, is the, uh, the alignment clip, I call it. I couldn't come up with any other name for it. But it's basically just a, an extension of the frame to allow uh, the kite line to come through um, one of these little eyelets and then the power line also comes through and the, the goal of this thing is just to keep the, uh, the, the kite line and the power line very close to each other on the exit of the of the of the, um, the shuttle because right now if you'll notice along here the kite line comes out through here uh, the power line has to stay lined up with the, the reel otherwise it'll come off so you've got a good inch and a half two inches of, of difference between them and then as you get up in, in higher altitudes, when the, when the angle changes or pulls, you have quite a bit of torque on this. So when, when you're pulling and raising it up, it actually causes the, um, the frame to want to twist and pull up and then ultimately topple around the kite line. And that's, that's a bad thing. You really want to keep it so that it's aligned, um, stays on the kite line and doesn't end up toppling over like that because then you'll twist your, your two lines coming off. Okay. Hope you can see this. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of close up in cramped quarters down here in the in the basement lab. <laughs> but if you have questions, I mean, you can contact me. You can email me or give me a phone call, and 
we can talk about it, but hopefully it can convey some of the, the features of this. So that's that's the frame. And then uh, the uh, the rigging pulleys are kind of, there's a lot of, probably a lot of different ways to do it. The way I did it here is <clears throat> find a, an older model here. I just take a regular ball bearing pulley that you can get at a hardware store. And then I basically just took, uh, in, in one of the older models, a carbon fiber uh, slot on either side or a piece, and then just bolted uh, the uh, two pieces on either side of it, and then uh, use a, um, a lock nut, a nylon lock nut in there, and then that's allowed to rotate around the pulley so you can put the line in it and then shut it, and then so that it doesn't open up, you can drill a hole and put some kind of a pin or something through there. And then uh, you can extend down with a with a 440 bolt or, or you know some kind of a piece of threaded rod to get the uh, so you can vertically align it. And this model here, I did it with uh, angle iron uh, just to make it a little bit more more solid. Um, this is a, a piece of uh, bent aluminum, just angled aluminum that was cut, and then just another piece of aluminum here, and then that just goes around there. And then you want to get it up in the front. Um, in this case, it's probably an inch and a half to inch and three quarters uh, up off the frame, and then the back one is just slightly higher, probably about two tenths of an inch higher. And we can talk about the rigging, and that's the the main components, I guess, of the of the frame, the the pins, you know, to go through here, and then uh, the uh, payload um, uh, rod, and then the uh, alignment clip. Okay, and then I guess coming out the back um, of the of the frame is a, a small eyelet. I used fishing eyelets that are kind of uh, rigged in here with some uh, Dura collars, uh, just to have low friction. So when the kite line exits, or not the kite line, but the uh, power line exits the back, there's low friction on that. Okay. Okay, let's let's get on to the good stuff. So this is traction wheel and the power reel um, and basically it's a kind of a coupled two basically two coupled pulleys or two coupled reels on, on top of each other on a shaft so that they're allowed to spin um, and then um, the bottom power reel is actually fixed in place vertically so that it goes but the the upper uh, traction wheel is actually allowed to float somewhat on the shaft so that it can just help reduce friction on the kite line and get it aligned uh, through the groove here. Uh, the biggest thing on this that I found, the thing that, that really you fight a lot is the whole friction thing. Uh, friction tends to not be too bad when you pull it to go up. It, it's actually pretty easy to, to cause this thing to go up the line. The, the trick is getting everything to be aligned just right and, and uh, everything kind of in harmony so that when you uh, let go of the power line, that actually the, the shuttle returns down on its own uh, power, basically with gravity. There's a lot of issues with different places where friction can get you and drag and stuff. So there's a lot of little uh, tinkering that had to be done to kind of optimize that. And I'm sure there's things you guys will think of uh, if somebody wants to experiment with this and take it a, a step further. Uh, can come up with other ways to kind of maybe optimize this if you're interested. So maybe the best way to kind of figure out the come or see what the components are of this is just to disassemble it here, and uh, we'll talk about some of the key features of the whole thing. So this is a, uh, I think it's a 1024 bolt um, that I found. I think a three and a half inch kind of thing. And there's there's various little pieces here that we'll talk about that that once I get the thing apart, uh, little shafts and bushings and and uh, ball bearings and things like that. We'll take her apart and then we'll put her back together piece by piece so you can kind of see what what everything is all about here.